Hi, and welcome to the Simple Worship Conversation. Renee Hoke. Oh. <laughs> what was you were supposed to, to say the morning program <laughs> with Shannon. <Moore. laughs> One day it's going to catch know. on. It's going to catch on. Okay, the next time you invite me, if you ever do again. When I do that. I say the morning program with, with Shannon Moore. There you go. That's very important. <sighs> there are a There's lot of, a lot of pressure in this thing. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming on. It's always good to have you on uh, the morning program, the Simple Worship Conversation. So thanks for being here. I'm happy to be here. So today we are looking at a very familiar story from the Gospel of Luke. Very Christmassy. Our other Advent texts so far have not been Christmassy. It either this, goes Christmassy or kind of scary. Right. Yes, but this one's good. But this could be a little scary, too. And so... Um, as we read this scripture, I'm going to ask you to read the parts that Mary says. Okay. And where are we starting and so stopping? We're, going to, uh, we're in chapter 1 of the Gospel of Luke, and we're going to start at verse 26 and end after verse 38. All right. Does that work? And then I'm I'll ready. set our 10-minute timer. I'm Keeping ready. with the brevity of simple worship, and we'll just talk about it. So here we go. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Okay. I'll begin our timer. What do you think about this text? You know, I have two things to say to you about this text. The first one, uh, first, it's, it's such a remarkable um, it's such a remarkable episode, and I imagine, I see it in my imagination, and I have all kinds of thoughts about it. But uh, for today's purposes, I want to point something out to you as I was preparing for this conversation. In verse 30, uh, the angel begins the speech and says in verse 31, And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And then the angel speaks for a long time after that, with kind of a theological um, theological presentation on the identity of Jesus Christ. Okay. He makes a big speech. Mm -hmm. It is a big speech. And then, as soon as the angel stops talking, Mary says, Mary goes back to <laughs> verse 31. <laughs> right. Wait, how can I be pregnant? So I don't even think she heard all the rest of that speech. I mean, the oh. angel says... You're going to conceive in your womb and bear a son. And, and I think Mary stopped listening at that moment and tried to figure out how in the world that could be. And I don't think she heard any of the rest of what the angel was saying because she's, wait, wait, I don't understand the logistics of this. Hold on a minute. Right. Mm. So, so then I think that... Um, I think that Mary is hearing what Mary needs to hear. I think that Angel is making some speeches that are important for us to hear. Mm -hmm. But Mary's taking this in as somebody who's going to be pregnant and she doesn't understand it. 
And whatever it is that the angel is saying, that she's an obedient servant. She can't possibly understand it. She doesn't really know all of the speech that the angel needs to impart to those of us who are reading this. Mm -hmm. But she's taking in what she can take in, and she's answering God, saying, all right, I'm, I'm in this. If and this is what you call me to do, I'm doing it. Right. And sometimes we can't take everything in either. That's a good lesson for Right. Us. For us. We only hear what we can hear. Uh, sometimes it makes me think of um, taking somebody else along with you when you go to the doctor's office for the results of the test that you're very worried about because you're going to listen and hear a piece of it, but you, you're going to miss the next piece as you're digesting what just got said. I've right. heard from lots of folks getting news from a doctor that you can't take it all in. Mary clearly has this need to understand the physical part of what's about to happen. Right. But she can take it all in. And I think about how thoughtful Mary, we know that she she takes in things and studies them. We, you know, ponders. she ponders things yeah. in her heart. So she will go back uh, home and think about the rest of what the angel said, but maybe she won't remember because she was so worried about being pregnant. I just think it's a reminder this was happening to humans, mm -hmm. and they were very much like us. They could only take in what they could take in. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, you know, I have a really active imagination, and even as where scripture is concerned, and so I like to create backstories and and sort of fantasize about things that you know that's about some of these <laughs> characters. And Gabriel is one of my favorite characters to to think about here. I I like to think because of how he responded to Zechariah in the in the previous story mm -hmm. when he gave the the news about John the Baptist and Zechariah didn't understand and he struck him mute um, that he that this was a new job for Gabriel that he didn't <laughs> quite know how to do it yet and kind of overreacted. And so even here you know, Mary didn't really, at that point, need to hear all that, that stuff. That long speech that he she was She didn't speaking. need the sermon. <laughs> she, need, she needed some real answers. And so... Do the, you also imagine how it was, um, he came to her and said, was she, I mean, did he appear kind of like in Star Trek? Or... I know. Did he knock on the door and he was standing there and... Said, right. may did, I have a word with you? Did, did, did he look like one of our boar's head angels? I mean, were, were the, the oh wings? Oh my gosh! Or, you know, did and she waited a while while he got his wings in just right to come through the door. Was there background music? <laughs> I mean, I just can't imagine. Or, or did he just? Look I can't like imagine a it. Right. It's it's really incredible. This the writer of Luke says Mary was perplexed by the angel's words, the greeting pondered what sort of greeting this might be. I think you would be pondering, where in the heck did this angel come from? Right. You know, instead of, hmm. Right. And what, what does that mean? The Lord is with you and um, there's just so... Just so confusing and so, who, I can't imagine that well, any... Well, and as young as she most likely was, you know. Um, I know I would have been, I mean, I'd be terrified now probably with would you have some questions if an angel appeared to you now? Would you ask him to stay for just a minute? I have a few questions. I will see. <laughs> Wait, I, I know that you've got an announcement, but after that, could we have some Q&A? <laughs> right. Would you like to be on my show? Because <laughs> because you, you you don't know when when it will be that you see another angel, so you would want to you would want that angel to linger. Although it would probably be frightening too. Right. I think. I had to do a prayer exercise. As you know, I'm in a, a, a course of study to become a spiritual director. And in the second year of that, we do the Ignatian Retreat, which invites you to really engage with scripture by placing yourself in the story and, and meditating on a scripture, on a story for a very long time as if you were there. And this was one of the ones that we did last year about this time as we were uh, doing that part of the, of the course. 
and as I was meditating on this story, I, I imagined myself there as sort of Mary's best friend, that we were sort of teenagery in the modern kind of way, sort of sitting on her bed, laughing. After this episode? Do, before. Oh, you w- oh. I was there when it happened. Oh, you when were I, a witness was, to it. Yeah, okay. I was a witness to it. And as the angel appeared to her and, and, and gave this announcement, I was unable to speak. But I was looking at her and saying, say no, say no, don't do it. People are going to talk about you. People are going to, you know, your parents will be angry. Don't do it, don't do it. And So you were protecting her. I was protecting her, but I could. I was unable to move, unable to speak in the presence of this being. And then um, when it was over and she had said yes and the angel departed, I said to her, why did you say yes? And she said it wasn't a question. The angel, he, and the angel didn't ask. The angel said, this is going to happen. Right. I mean, there, it wasn't a would you like to do this question. I mean, do you think she had an opportunity to say no thank you? No. I don't think so at all. There must have been something very convincing, though. About the angel being there. Well, sure. You know, it's not a vol- vol- voluntary, uh, not a voluntary plan, but. But I mean, of what? course, of course, you would take it in, and right, you wouldn't. Well, do it. Could I have a few days to think it over? Right. I mean, what do you think? I guess, I guess that's my question. Do you think there was any room for negotiation there? Does not the way that. Not in the account that we have. So what about the, the calls that God places upon our lives? Is there a negotiation there? Is that our call to accept? Or is there an expectation of this is the way it's going to be? What do you think? Well, this, I, I think that... I think someone coming and announcing a call. Uh, I know that I've heard um, ministers... Um, share their call, their sense of their call to ministry. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it came from a person who said, I see in you the qualities of ministry. I believe you're being equipped for ministry. Mm -hmm. Kind of a tag, you're it. And that, that external affirmation, confirmation, felt like an assignment to that person. Felt, perhaps it came from their pastor, the -hmm. pastor that they grew up with, or it or felt like an assignment or something like that yeah so that external call as opposed to a sense of a sense of hearing god's voice somebody else speaking for god seeming to speak for god mm-hmm. so maybe although we none of us have had the angel gabriel standing there we've had a messenger mm-hmm. from god seeing in us some potential and sensing God at work. Yeah. So, and just proclaiming it, but not saying you should think about it necessarily, or I wonder if it, if, if that's what God really wants from you or. Right. Well, and I know we're out of time, but it, how great it was that she was given the warning. What if she had just shown up pregnant and didn't know what was going on? I mean, there was this message that. I wonder how long from this episode until it was clear that she was with child. I wonder how much time she had to get her head around it before Going her visit Elizabeth and her body began to communicate something anyway to the people in the town. Yeah. Good questions. We can ask the angel if the angel, if the angel ever shows up. We've got plenty, we got of, questions. plenty of questions. Don't let the angel leave <laughs> before you find before out. Before you ask some <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, always it's so good to have these conversations My pleasure. with you. And hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Take care.